In today's tutorial, I'm going to be going over how to use the Seeking Actuator and create a navigation mesh so your object can navigate to its endpoint, which is its goal. So that could be your player or whatever you want your object to navigate to using the Seeking Actuator. So we're going to be going over two ways today. The first way is going to be building it with the nav mesh panel in here. As you can see, we can build a nav mesh automatically. The other way I'm going to be showing you today is creating it manually. So I'm going to do that at the end, towards the end, showing you how to do that. So let's continue on with the tutorial. All right, so first of all, if I was to get our scene, so let's say you make a basic scene like this. This is just some basic uh, cubes and stuff put together to make a little bit more advanced scene anyway. What you'll see is if I grab both of these and build a navigation mesh, it works. Not the best, but it does work. Now, one thing you, uh, this will definitely happen to you if you do not uh, do it a certain way is if I was to add a cube here and scale this up, let's rotate a little bit, put it here. And I want, of course I want my uh, player or uh, sorry, my object, whatever I've got the seeking actuator on to navigate around this object. So if I grab these and I'm like, all right, I'm going to build a nav mesh. And I build it, and all of this happens. And you're like, what has happened? You don't know what's happening. You don't know how to fix it, and it's just a, a horrendous mess. So there's a couple of problems. There's a couple of reasons for this problem. First of all, with your objects, every object you use, you're going to need to apply, scale, rotation, and location. So you're going to go Control A, and you're going to go location. That's going to put that at the center. You want all of these to be at the center. So now you see... If we build it, we've got a little bit better. Actually, it's not any better, but basically it's working better. And I'm going to apply these all the locations. So all of the objects have to be in exactly the set. The origin has to be in the same place. You also need to apply rotation and apply scale. All right. So now if we go build nav mesh, as you can see, it's working, but it's still pretty ugly. So what we can go ahead and do is delete that, select all of these again. And the main thing you're going to want to change is this radius down here under height. We're going to change this to something like 0 0.05. Now you could go 0 0.1 or something depending on what you need. But we're going to click build nav mesh. And as you can see it's working a lot better. Now you can see it's a bit ugly and it doesn't work very well. And if we go on to the solid view you can see all these weird colors. This is basically telling from what I know telling the object where it can go. It's uh, stuff I don't know how to do but someone programmed it in so we don't have to so as you can see here all right so let's say you have this but your object's trying to get up in this corner right here and that's going to bump into there and you don't want that you want this a bit more clean so that your objects go around in a nicer way so the way we can fix this is we're going to go ahead and grab uh, these let's say and I'm going to go ahead and delete faces and as you can see now, we have a big problem in nav mesh. So we can go ahead and move this down. Rotate this. Grab this here. And just kind of fix up what we want. And then we can go ahead and we're going to remove doubles as well. I find that's a problem. So we removed all doubles. So we don't have that problem now. And let's say I'm going to go ahead and connect this with uh, Alt-M. And I'm going to connect it last. And I'm just going to do this with all of them. All right, and I'm going to get rid of this. We don't really need it. All right, so you're going to kind of fix up what you need here. So, uh, so as you can see, it's done, but now this is all black, which is not what we want. So the way we can fix this, fix this, is come to our object and just click here, as you can see in the physics panel. Um, here you see nav mesh reset, reset index values. Once you've done that, as you can see, the uh, mesh is all updated and it should work fine now. So let's go ahead and add some kind of player uh, or what object, sorry, that's going to be your enemy or whatever you want to follow or go to a position using the navigation mesh. So I'm going to add a cube and I'm going to move this out here so we can see it. And I'm going to move this up. Now, one thing to note with this cube is this cube is massive. This is two meters by two meters. So the default cube is pretty big. So the, what you're going to want to go ahead and do is over here to create a normal sized uh, cube, I guess it's kind of normal size to a person, it's not exact, but it works pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to 1 
by one by two. So that's about a two meter tall person, which is pretty tall, but um, it, it's a good good starting size. So as you can see there. Another way you can do it as well is if you use the Rigify plugin, you can go ahead and add a mesh in, and that's a skeleton, like a human skeleton. That's going to show you the actual size of how big your characters should be and how big your environment should be. So that's just a quick thing to know. Anyway, let's continue on with this tutorial. So we're going to go ahead and come down here to Game Logic, and we're going to go back into Texture Mode so it looks more interesting. Um, if you've got it set up so it looks a bit nicer, or you could just stay in the old mode, doesn't really matter. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and grab our um, a player, or no, sorry, our object, a player, whatever, it, whatever it is, whatever you're using it for, and we're going to add an always, and then we're going to go ahead and add a in the actuators panel, we're going to add a seeking. So we're going to go ahead and connect this up. Now we need some some object for it to follow to or seek to or navigate to. Um, yep, so we're going to go ahead and do is add an empty. I'm going to click here, right here, so that our 3D cursor comes here. I'm going to go ahead and add an empty. Um, now you can add multiple things, whatever you like. Uh, but an empty should work fine for us. So I'm going to go with a sphere. Just a nice and easy one to see. I'm going to move this up a little bit. Alright. So now we can call this uh, goal. Alright, so now that we have that, we're going to go ahead back here. And we're going to see we have this target object. So what we can go ahead and do is grab this eye picker. And just select this goal empty and that's going to be the one it's going to navigate to then we can go ahead and select this eye picker and we can click this and we're going to never and this is a nav mesh it's going to use so this is our nav mesh here so um what we've done here is the target object this object is going to try and get to and this is the mesh it's going to use to navigate to it all right so by default if we click um play i'm going to go into this mode so it's a bit easier to see it works, but you'll see if we move this over here, uh, we've got these weird warping of the cube. It's just flying. It's not navigating around. So first of all, to get rid of that weird um, stretching you can see here, we're going to go ahead and change this to from a static to a dynamic object, and that's going to get rid of all that weird stretching. But now you can see it's getting stuck here. So we have built this whole nav mesh, you want it to be able to navigate around. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to change the beh behavior here from seek to path follow. So this is just going to follow the path to get to the object. So now you should see, if we go into this mode so we can see it a bit better, it's following the path. And if we click down here, this visualize, this is going to show, it's, show us the path it's taking. So it's following the path, as you can see. If we put this over here, it's going to follow that fastest path there. So you can see it's following it up, and as you can see, those edits we did before have not messed up the nav mesh, and it's working fine. All right, so let's go ahead and go over a few more of these things. First of all, this distance, or DIS for dis, I guess, whatever, you, however you say that. This is the distance from the target object before this will shut down. So basically, if this gets in with within one, I believe one meter of this uh, here, or one blender unit, depending on what uh, type of type of units you're using. You can use metric or imperial, whatever you want. I'm just gonna keep it normal. Um, whatever you're using, it's gonna be within one here, I believe. So we're gonna, so if this gets in with one meter of this, or uh, whatever our set is in feet and stuff, it's going to basically deactivate this, and then when this target object gets with with um, higher than a meter away, basically it's going to start following it again. So if you have a player, and the player moves, and your object gets close to the player, it's not going to push into the player's face and be all annoying. It's going to shut down until the player moves within a meter away. But of course, you can change this. So simplest way to show this is let's change this to three. And as you can see, when it gets in with three units, it, it shuts down. And the reason it's sliding is I believe I have some kind of physics thing on this. Um, 
I'm not sure why it's sliding, but anyway, you see here that it shuts down. So we can go ahead and change this up to like 10 and it should shut down automatically. So I'm going to change this to 1. You see we have this velocity here. So at current stage it's 3. We can go ahead and change this up to something bigger like 6. And as you can see it moves fast. Now we, you see here we have acceleration and turn speed. I believe they don't work for this path follower. I haven't been able to get them to work. Um, they don't really make a difference. I haven't been able to find anything really that useful on the blender manual about them or anything like that as well as this update here um i believe the high number you put this is going to update less so it's going to you know be less laggy so if you change this to something like a thousand that's a hundred a thousand basically it's not going to update so as you can see there it's only updating every so often so as you can see so you can leave this on zero and as you can see as soon as it goes past it it updates so as you can see it works a lot better when it updates a lot faster so you're probably going to want to stay with that now south, south terminate basically this is the same as this distance thing once it gets in the distance it's going to self terminate and what this means is that basically this is going to shut down if this object here, if this empty moves, this is not going to start following it again because it's already terminated itself. It, it's basically dead. This doesn't work anymore. All right. So there is the basic functions. Also, we have the couple of things I forgot to go over. But anyway, here they are. We have the axis. Now, the axis is the axis in which this is pointing in. So if I was to go ahead and scale this, oh, scale this on the Y out a bit and then go and apply scale just to be safe what you'll see is we're going on the side so you can see we're going in a different direction the direction we are facing is the x so it says the x is the front so this turns around and goes that direction but we can go ahead and change this to the y and you'll see here it goes in the correct direction you can also change this to the z and it's going to go and uh, that's going to be the front so I'm going to leave this on the Y, you can also do minus, so depending on which way you, your front of your object is, you're going to want to change that. We also have this N, which is yeah, use the normals of the nav mesh to set the up value, up vector. So if we click that, it's basically just going to follow the normals of the mesh. Um, so if you want that, it's there, it's an option. So let's say this is our game and we want it to be a bit nicer so what we can go ahead and do is get rid of all of this and let's say i just want to make a nice easy nav mesh so i'm going to go ahead and duplicate this now you don't have to duplicate your object this just seems the easiest way and i'm going to go ahead and delete these all right so i'm just gonna go ahead and delete all the bottom of these oh. All right, delete. Oh, make sure you're not deleting anything important. So, here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and go Control M, Alt M. Uh, sorry, Alt M, I believe it is. So I select the main one, Alt M. Yep, Alt M, and I'm going to just going to go last there just to make life easier. I'm going to go ahead and grab these. And I'm going to do the same thing, adding an edge loop there. So I'm just making this into a basic thing. Now you could just model this a lot easier another way, but ah, uh, this works. So let's do this. Let's do this. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this. We don't need this. Let's go back and go Alt H. So as you can see, this is showing up here. Let's select our nav mesh. I'm going to just going to call this nav just so it's easy to find and we can go ahead and extrude these out extrude these out and let's go ahead and extrude this out extrude this out just to make a basic nav mesh now i'm going to be lazy and just leave it at this but we now how we turn this into a nav mesh is we're going to go ahead and come over here to the physics panel, change the physics type from static or whatever it's on to nav mesh. So what you need to go ahead and do is just go new reset um, nav mesh reset index values, I believe. And as you can see now, we should see 
that nothing's going to happen because we need to set the nav mesh. So we're going to click this, select the nav mesh object. And as you can see now, it's following the nav mesh. You can go ahead and go grab all of this, go control T and have a nav mesh with all of these triangles but i don't believe you need that i just think they do that because it's a lot easier to generate them with triangles but you can just do it like this let's go reset uh nav mesh values and as you can see now it's following the object uh you might want to make these a bit more skinny here and maybe make this a bit more skinny so what you're seeing here is we're going to have a um, our object's going to stay more in the center. So you're going to have to change this a bit and maybe reset the values. But as you can see, we have the second way. And this is going to be a little bit more work. You could also edit the other one. But basically, this is going to give you a lot more control and your nav mesh is going to work a lot nicer, a lot smoother. So if you want to put in extra work for this, you can. And you're going to have a lot nicer nav mesh. But um, that's pretty much it. Um, if you do know how this acceleration and turn speed works, I'd love to know because I literally couldn't find anything on um, how they work. I, they don't really seem to work. I did some testing and they don't really seem to do that much. So if you know how they work, I would love to know. Um, you can also subscribe if you want to see more tutorials because I come out with a new tutorial every single week on a different subject. So you can subscribe and you'll see those every single week. But other than that, have a great week and I really hope you found this tutorial useful and you can find some uses for this nav mesh. Anyway, have a great week.